Hello, welcome to my No Frills, Plain Vanilla, No Special Effects channel. My name is Greg, and today I'm going to give you a tour of my library. Now, my library is going to be disassembled very soon. I am moving from 30 miles south of Seattle to about 50 miles south of Washington, D.C. later this summer. So all the books will have to be boxed up and shipped across the country. And then once I'm there, I will get to unbox them and reassemble them into a new library. And I wanted to show what it's like before and what it's like after. So now let's take the tour. Okay, this is my home office where I spend a great portion of my day slaving away to earn the income so I can buy more books. Back over here is a, you can see my leather reclining couch. I spend many hours napping or reading books on this couch. Over here, you will see empty bookshelves. These bookshelves are empty because my wife has hired a home staging specialist to help us sell our home for the best price. The prices in this area of Seattle are going nutsy pagan, and we're trying to get the absolute best price. And for whatever reason, the specialist said these two little shelves had to go. Going over here, you will see another smaller shelf, which the staging specialist said had to go. Over here, you will see my Kindle Oasis. I spend quite a lot of time reading on this, uh, this Kindle. It is uh, my favorite Kindle. It's the larger edition. It is the, uh, the, the second version of the Kindle Oasis. And if Amazon uh, decides to release a third edition this year, no, I'm sorry, a fourth edition. I don't have the third edition. I would probably go ahead and purchase that. Um, this, 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 this version is doing just fine, um, but I would kind of like to see the new technology anyway, because I like new technology. Over here, you will see a box full of bookmarks. You can probably guess that I like bookmarks. Whenever I visit a city or a country, I love to collect bookmarks from there. However, most places don't make bookmarks anymore, and that's, that's rather a shame, because I really truly like them. On the top shelf over there, you will see some art books and some anthologies and short story collections. And over here, you have my mass, the beginning of my mass market collection. These uh, mass markets are quite a jumble right now because the, the empty bookshelves you saw used to have paperback books on them. And I've had to double stack these shelves over here. And let's see, I don't think there's any particularly interesting book on these shelves right now. Who knows what people will like. And going down, we see more paperback books continuing. Over here. Over here and down here. Now, one thing I'm going to show you is I cover my books with these uh, plexiglass sheets. And the reason I cover with plexiglass sheets is about 15 years ago, one of my cats developed a urinary tract infection. And if you know anything, about cats and urinary tract infections is that when, when they're ill, 
they will not use their litter box, but they will pee up against flat surfaces. And apparently that cat decided my books were a, a very good source of flat surface to pee, up on, pee on. So I, I, I lost the collected works of Wallace Stegner to cat urine. And after that, I decided to protect my books and take my cat to the vet to get pills to um, make sure she uh, got better from her urinary tract infection. Up top, you will see some more anthologies. I carry some religious works up there. Over here is my complete collection of the hard case crime paperback series. These are all the original leisure editions uh, until leisure went out of business. Now, these are all the, the pulp mysteries. They're, they're interesting. You have to love the covers of these. Oh, they, they, they do it in the style of the, the original pulps. And we'll go there. Here we will have a um, Sword and Planet series, uh, the Dre Prescott series. I read them, or originally read like the first five or six when I was in high school. And then I, I started collecting them again about 20 years ago. I didn't even get as far as I got through into when, I, when I read them in high school, but they're fun to collect. There's a whole bunch of them. And I have a nearly complete series. I do not have the final volume in the paperbacks because at the time, the, the final paperback, I, I just could not find in the used bookstore. And eBay had it for, on sale for like 50 bucks. And I said, eh, I have better uses for 50 bucks than an old paperback that I'm never going to read. But maybe now that they have released the ebook editions, the, the prices of the paperbacks have, came down, have come down. So after that series, you'll see some more Sword and Planet books. Lynn Carter, and Edgar Rice Burroughs. Over here, you will see the Richard Blade series. It's sort of a, a, a take off the Sword and Planet where series. Well, where in the original Sword and Planet, uh, an Earthman is sent to a different planet and has many adventures with swords. This is about a British Secret Service agent who is transported across what they call Dimension X to a different planet in every book. So the setting is completely different. And as I understand it, there were like four authors of this series and Jeffrey Lord was just a house name. And again, if you look at these books, the, the, the covers are winners. There you go. A naked man defending a naked woman with a sword against some sort of giant reptile. You can't get any better than that. Or maybe you can't get any worse than that. I'll let you decide which, which side of the fence you want to sit on there. Down below, we have my New York Review of Books classics. I absolutely love this series. They are very good and very high quality paperbacks of books that you might not otherwise find or be reprinted over there. Down on the final three shelves are the, the paperback books, which I am considering uh, unhauling. It's because they're so common that I can pick them up when I, I move to Virginia again, if I want to, or just buy the ebook editions. Now over here, I'll give you a good panoramic view of the wall. I'm actually quite surprised that my, that my wife's staging specialist let me keep this wall, but apparently it's distinct enough that, it, that potential buyers will not be put off. And on the top shelf, you will see my graphic novels or other picture books up there. My absolute favorite, up there is The Complete Far Side by Gary Larson. And here I start with just the, 
the, the hardcovers. I, I do mix in hardcover and fiction together just by author. Go on down and you will also see a very large collection of Thomas Bernhard. He was a very curmudgeonly Austrian author who was very upset with um, the way Germany acted in the wars. And he just ranted and railed against the, 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 the zeitgeist of Germany that caused World War II. And his style is worth showing, I think, if, if you've never seen his style. And you can see in the books that there are no paragraph breaks anywhere in this book. From beginning to end, from first page to the end, one paragraph. Now, this book may be slightly different. I think he had like different chapters, each about 75 maybe pages long, but still no paragraph breaks. And I thought it was just a very unique way to write when it was in my late 20s or early 30s or whenever I read those. Going down. I have the three volumes are Jorge Luis Borges in English. Scrolling down. I have The Demon by Von Daughter and his other novel, Every Man a Murderer. I'm willing to bet that Every Man a Murderer is a rather rare book. So going down the bottom shelf, up there, and going up. There you see some books. Over here you see some thrillers by Steve Gerlich. He's an Australian thriller writer. I will not show you those covers. The cover of the, the Richard Blade book uh, was tame enough to show you, but those covers could potentially get me in trouble. Going back there, we have Gunter Gross. I have three signed editions from Gunter Gross, one of two Nobel laureate authors whose books I have signed. Going down. More, more there. More books. Got my Homer. I have two editions of the Odyssey. Right there. All right, this one might be interesting. I'm not going to unwrap its covering. But this is an original hardcover edition of Stephen King's uh, The Gunslinger. This is supposedly limited to 10,000 editions. If you read the introduction, uh, he was supposed to only release these books in limited hardcover editions. Obviously, he had a change of heart somewhere around the way, and now they're very popular in other editions. But that one, that, that's a rare edition. I'm going down in there. We see more books. I have hardcovers of H.P. Lovecraft and some rather rare editions of poetry and other essays. Going down. There. And go there. I have Women and Men by Joseph McElroy, a very famous postmodern novel. It's over 1,000 pages long. And I have the, the Complete Masters of Rome series by Colleen McCullough in hardcover. Going down. Over there. 
Now we see more books. The John Julius Norwich Byzantium History, all three of his volumes. And of course, I love my um, placard, a home without books is a body without a soul. A quote from Cicero. We have up there, books by J.R. Salamanca. He was a writing professor when I was in college. got a hardcover version of Miss Macintosh, my darling. This is another very large, I guess, experimental book written by a woman. It's about a woman on a bus trip, as I understand it. She gets on the bus near the beginning of the book and doesn't get off the bus until the end of the book. If you like that kind of stuff, it's very good. I, I just haven't had time to start it. And down there is my collection of William T. Volman. As you can see, I have a lot of books by William T. Volman. Most of them are signed. He's been often cited as an American author who who's going to win the Nobel Prize in Literature. Uh, I think he's highly, highly deserves that prize, but I don't think you are going to see him winning that prize anytime soon. Now also, if you know him, you are going to start drooling because I have the hardcover seven volume set of Rising Up and Rising Down. And this is original. I am the only owner of these books. I bought them directly from Sweeney's when they went on sale. Now over here, we start going to my trade paperbacks. Over there. books over there. And there you see the Flashman series. I read those um, probably in the 90s. The, the first few books are probably the funniest or one of the funniest books I have ever read. Uh, Flashman is uh, actually based on um, a very minor character from a book of Tom Brown's school days, and he was the school bully who got expelled. And Flashman is an incredible coward. And he's so cowardly, he fights very vigorously to get out of danger. And everyone thinks he is a fabulous hero. And the only thing about the series is that um, he is a horrible human being. He's a womanizer, he is a racist, even though he likes women of all races and cheats on his wife and so forth. I petered out about book seven just because it got repetitive and you know exactly what was going to happen in the next book because he's sort of, that's just the way series go. Over there. Yeah. 
Oh, well, there it is. there's another book. Where is it? Right there. The, the Children of the Pride by Robert Manson Myers. He won the National Book Award for that series of books. It's a collection of letters from the Civil War South, South the, the South in the Civil War. Again, I said, like I said, he won the National Book Award, and he was the one of the most pompous and arrogant people I have ever met. We had a writing class with him that was required. It was like junior composition. And he really didn't teach writing. He just sat in his chair and told him us all sorts of wonderful things about life. Like if you break a piece of fine china in someone's home, all you have to do is say, sorry, and you're, and you're done. A great thing to learn in a class about writing. And over here, we have one of my second books signed by a Nobel Prize laureate, Conversations in the Cathedral. If you look carefully, my rabbit decided to chew on that book. He had very excellent taste in books. And my Jim Thompson books. Going down. Here, now these are my open letter books. When a publisher publishes books in uniform editions like this, I, I, I do tend to keep them all shelved together because I think that's a very nice look on the shelf. Going over here, I actually have a paperback collection of uh, Miss Macintosh, My Darling. I picked it up when I went to the Friends of Seattle Public Library where you could just fill like a bag of books for like five bucks. And down on the below, you will see my motley collection of poetry. And going over to the last shelf, this is another shelf that I have to remove before we put my house on sale. We have some reference books on top. My collection of four ancient Chinese novels. And then we start into some box collections of books. Going down, we see some more box. And here's a good one. This is Bottom's Dream by Arno Schultz. This is an absolutely ginormous book. And it's 1,400 pages long. And it's ginormous. Look at, look at the size of that book. It's almost a hand um, right there, larger than that other hardcover. And it's printed in, in three columns. Let's go ahead and take a look at that one. It's an interesting book to look at. Oh, I just can't carry it one hand. Hold on for a moment. Sorry for all that. Shaky cam. Maybe I'll try to do something with it. So look at this. You have one set of text here. Third set of text here. Or sorry, that's the second text. And that's the third set of text. Now, if I can zoom in close enough, it actually looks like math, the way he writes. And it's just very, very difficult to read. I have not read the whole thing. This was translated from the German by John E. Woods. And I am willing to bet that almost no one has ever read this entire book in English translations cover to cover. I just bet a donut if Booktube allows betting. Okay, so now we come to my Library of America. And I love the Library of America editions. I have some of the box without slip covers down there. And at the very end, you will see 
the the regular editions with the slip covers and I have quite a few of those and they're just really marvelous editions if you look at them they hold up very well over time I bought this book probably 1997 and the pages are nice and clean still they're expensive but I think they're, they're very much worth the price. So that is the end of my library. And that is the tour of my library. I hope you liked it. If you did, please subscribe or give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it and you think I was just a blowhard and bloviating about my books, go ahead and give me a thumbs down. Goodbye.